anybody else would like to come up and join us in the choir? We're going to get started this morning on page 188. Page 188. stand while we sing all three verses, page 188. Anybody have children you go down to the children's church or down to the nursery, it is now open. All right. We still got folks coming in back there. Good job. There, there's some seats. They're bringing out some chairs. Y'all just be patient for a minute. They'll have some chairs out here uh, for you to sit in. Amen. Ain't God good? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for this wonderful day, what this day stands for. And uh, Easter Sunday is always one of the most... Uh, exciting days of the year. So I'm excited for what God is planning to do and what God has already done. And uh, may God give you blessings today. We're making room. Uh, some of you guys, you know, we got any home folks that will move up here in the clock bar law for us so some of our visitors can come in? Anybody want to do that for me? Would you do that this morning? we got some visitors still coming in. We appreciate you so very much. We're trying to make room. And... Uh, it's a very good problem to have, amen? Very good problem to have.
Just bear with us for just a moment. We'll get everything straightened out in just a minute, and uh, we'll, we'll get started. All right, everybody that's up here, next week. Yes. <laughs> All right. Maybe if nothing else, that give you a little bit of elbow room, amen, and uh, God's good this morning, amen. amen, praise the Lord. Hey, listen, we're, we're praying, y'all help us pray, we're praying about a bigger church, amen, amen. I believe it's about time, God is uh, really good to us, and I appreciate you being here this morning, we're just here to serve the Lord this morning, to uh, give him glory, and uh, thank him for rising on that third day. Listen, y'all, we say it this morning at our sunrise service, the tomb's still empty, amen? And Jesus is still alive. Praise his holy name. Let's give him glory this morning. Let's just worship. Visitors, thank you for being here this morning. You don't know how much it means to us for you to be here. And uh, we're excited and ecstatic that you're here. We ask you, if you don't have a church home somewhere, please come back and be with us again. We'd love to have you next week as well. And looking forward to what God's going to do. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. There's special prayer requests all over the house. Let's do this just for the sake of time this morning. If you got a special prayer request, just lift your hand. Amen. God knows what's behind that, uh, that, that request this morning. He knows the need, and he's able to meet it. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, ask him to touch our service, ask him to lead and guide us. Brother Cody, take us to the Lord in prayer. Well, we've already had a good morning in the in the Lord's house this morning. We started out out in the parking lot this morning around sunrise and had sunrise service, and uh, that was a special event. And uh, we we appreciate what God how He showed up and just met with us this morning. And uh, we're glad to be able to continue in in worship today. But uh, just a couple of announcements I want to make. Uh, if you're here visiting, if you don't know, the restrooms are down this out this door to the left. There's a men and a women's down there. You make yourself at home if you need to go out and use those. That's where they are. But uh, uh, we got a special, we got a lot of visitors this morning, amen? But we got a really special visitor. And uh, it may be the first time you've been here today, but we have a first-time visitor, I guess, since uh, he was, came into the world. Matt, stand up, show it, baby, y'all. We got Riggs Bailey Jennings. Hey, man, praise the Lord. Born uh, February 18, 2022, and uh, he, he's got to come to church. They've been wanting to come back for quite some time, but uh, the Lord's just been good to that family, and we appreciate you. Man. Thank you for that. Young man, bring that young man to church. Let me tell you, that's how you do it right there. Right. Birth them into the world and bring them into church. But what most of you don't know, he came to church a lot of times before he came out of that womb, amen? <laughs> so uh, we appreciate them being here this morning. We got a, a couple of things. If you've got a, a 
bulletin this morning. They were out in the back. If you did not, it tells you what's going on around our, our church. But we got something coming up the first week of May that's very exciting for us. It's called I Love My Community Week. And uh, we do, we've participated in this for many years uh, now, but it's through our Baptist Association. But the first week of May is I Love My Community Week. And for us, we're going to be showing our love, being the feet and the hands of Jesus to Ephesus Elementary School, our fire station, our town hall, Tanner, we die, we, uh, and our emergency department will be doing those. And there's a there's an insert in your bulletin today that tells you all what we'll be doing. And we're going to create treats. We're going to create baked goods, things of that nature to send out and take to those people and tell them how much we love them and then pray for them and just pray that God would help us through that week. Amen. Uh, other events coming up, don't forget about Wednesday nights. Listen, if you're here in visiting, we have Wednesday night service as well. starts at 7 p.m. We have classes for, for our adults. So you come be a part of that. And you say, well, I got kids. What do I do with them? Good thing we got classes for every age, amen, all the way up from little to, 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 to high schoolers and even college age. So you come let them go be a part of that. So we'll, it'll be a blessing. Uh, all the other stuff is still in your bulletin. You take a look at it, and we'll go from there. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Our, our thought this morning in, in sunrise service was an invitation to Jesus. We wanted to just ask him to come sit a while with us. Yeah, and as he went to that Emmaus Road, as he, he made, as they got to their destination, it says he made as if he would go further. He was waiting for them to invite him in. Listen, this is his house this morning. He doesn't need an invitation into this place. He's already here. I feel his presence. But what he does want is an invitation into your heart this morning. He wants to be in your spirit and help you this morning and give you what you stand in need of. And he'll do it if you'll invite him in. So I just encourage you to do that this morning. Love, Tony, come back and lead us in uh, our next portion of the service. So I'll second that what Kevin says about appreciate everybody coming out. And if you would, come back next Sunday. That way I have a full choir. Mm -hmm move everybody from there and get them up here, but uh, choir's got a special we're going to sing this morning, kind of just <coughs> out any other congregational songs, so choir's going to do a special this morning, it's in Christ alone, listen to the words, listen to the words of the song, and then as you listen to that, a lot of them that went to camp and stuff, that's pretty much been a theme, you know, for camp a lot of times, but, you know, in Christ alone, that song right there, we kind of really took a liking to it, it's got a lot of meaning to it, so I encourage you not just listen to the music, but actually listen to the words of actually the song. I mean, you're welcome to worship along with us because it is a very worshipful song. In Christ alone.
wasn't that good singing this morning? Yeah. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Praise his holy name. Listen, we're going to do something a little different this morning. We're going to play a video right for you here, a, a worship song uh, that we, just something that's touched my heart, a song that's been uh, been playing on the radio for quite some time, it's really meant a lot to me, and uh, I pray that you'll just let the, let the Lord let you worship in it. And uh, Mr. Cole's going to play it. If you know the song, sing along with it. If you don't, I promise you after you hear it today, you'll want to hear it tomorrow. Amen. And it'll, it'll help you. So uh, let's do this. I feel like we can worship a little better as we stand. Because I'm about to preach here in just a minute. You're going to have to sit through my preaching. So let's stretch your legs just one more time. I know it's packed. I know you're full. But let's stand up. Let's worship the Lord through this video here. And uh, the Lord puts upon your heart. Listen, we're just following the Holy Ghost here this yes. morning. Amen. Lord, and puts on your heart. These altars are always open. Yes. There's something you need to go to him about this morning, something you need to praise him about, something you need to just talk to him about, you come. But you obey the Lord this morning as we worship to this video.
today where Jesus walked out of that tomb, yes. the least that we could do You're right. was say, thank you, Jesus, yes. hey. for the blood applied. Hey. That may not do a whole lot for you this morning. I'm going to tell you, that right there helps me today. Amen. Amen. The blood applied. Thank, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. I'm thankful for the blood of the precious lamb this morning. Right. It's only through the blood. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But because his blood was shed, our sins can be washed as white as snow this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Now, I, it, we, I don't have time to preach this this morning. I surely want to. Amen. Last year after Easter, we went in and we had a, a Wednesday night service and we, we asked this question, what was Jesus doing while his body was lying in the tomb? A lot of people have that question. And if you want that answered, you're going to have to go back and look on YouTube. we got it our archive back there. You can look it up and watch that. But I promise you, Jesus was not just taking a nap. Amen. Yeah, right. He wasn't just sleeping for three days. He was working. He was doing. But one of the things he was doing was he went down to a place called Hades. People say, did he go to hell? He did. He did not go there to suffer or to sacrifice. Listen, all the suffering, all the sacrifice that had to be done was done on the cross. Amen. Right. All the penalty of our sin was paid on the cross. He didn't yes. have to go pay any sin debt in, in hell. But what he did do, he went down there and he got some folks from the Old Testament. was in a place called paradise. Where, at, when that thief on the cross said, Jesus, remember me today when you enter into my kingdom. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. That's where he was talking about. It was a place where people went. It was not a place of suffering, but just a place of holding. He went and gathered them up, and he took them to heaven. And while he was down there, he shouted over a chasm into the place of hell where mm -hmm. Satan and all his enemies were. And there he says, hey, you might have thought you won, but I'm not dead. Amen. Yeah, and he went on up to heaven yeah. that day, and there, on the mercy seat in heaven, he applied his precious blood. Hey, hey listen, thank you, Jesus, for the blood that was applied. And because the blood was applied in heaven... Some may say, why did he have to go to heaven to apply blood? Well, that's where sin originated, in the heart of Satan and the heart of Lucifer. When he was there in heaven, he had to go there. He had to take that sacrifice, that blood sacrifice, and place it upon the mercy seat in heaven. And when he did that, the Father looked at him and he said, I'm satisfied. Amen. I'm satisfied with that, with that sacrifice that has been made. And because he's satisfied today, you and I have an opportunity through the blood of Jesus yes. to be saved. Thank you, and you'll Lord. live in heaven forever. I'm going to tell you something. That does something for me. Thank Amen. you, Jesus, for the blood applied. I appreciate you being here this morning. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, chapter number 24. I'm going to try to be brief this morning, but I ain't making no promises. Praise Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost Praise here in this place this morning. Listen, God wants to help you today. Amen. Amen. Listen, that's why you came here this morning. Right. Not just to show up because it's Easter. You come to get some help. Let Jesus help you this morning. He wants to. He really does. And I, I, I pray that you just be obedient to him. Listen to his voice. And let God speak to you today. Let's stand. i tell you what. We've stood. I normally ask our folks to stand your, your shoulder to shoulder. Let's just stay. I'm just going to read a couple of verses of scripture. You just follow along with me in your Bible. If you got to Luke chapter number 24. Excuse me. It's Luke chapter number 23 verse number 44. Say amen. 
It's, it's chapter 23, Mr. Cole. I probably messed you up bad. Amen. I may have to give her a minute to get that straightened out back there. Luke chapter 23, verse 44. There she's got it. Let's just listen to what the Bible says. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until about the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. Let's pray. Lord, I love you today. I thank you for what you're doing in my heart right now. Lord, you may not be helping anybody else here today, but Lord, you're helping me. But Lord, I know that you're moving. I know you're helping. And Lord, I know that these people can feel you. Lord, I pray that, God, that you would just continue to move and you'd speak through this word today, God. Use me as a vessel. Hide me behind the cross. Lord, just use me for your glory. Help me, God, and, and thank you for all that you will do. Thank you for dying on that cross. Thank you for getting up again. And, Lord, thank you for giving me life this day and this hour. Help someone this morning, especially a lost person, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach this morning just for a minute on this thought. Put it in God's hands. Put it in God's hands. The Lord moved upon my heart a few weeks ago to, to begin to put this message together. And uh, God began to, to, to work it in my heart. And uh, Let me say this about how I got to my message this morning. I believe this. I believe social media may be one of the most destructive things. Right that has ever come upon this planet. You say, well, what in the world does that have to do with you getting your message I'm about to tell you? I believe social media has been very destructive for our, our society, for people. It's, it's give people a platform that don't need a platform. It's giving people a, a place that, 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 to, to spout things that they don't need to spout. It's, to, it's giving people a place to, to say things they wouldn't normally say face to face, amen? Uh, the Bible says if you got a problem with somebody, go to them face to face. You know why that is? Because you say a whole lot more behind their back than you would to their face. Amen? When you get face to face, you won't say. But social media has been, a, been destructive. It was in, in thought of and it was uh, came up with for this purpose to more connect people. And I, can I say this? We may be more connected. You may know more about my life now because of social media, but we are not connected nearly as we were. Listen, we may be connected by technology, but we are disconnected because of technology this morning. Amen? Listen, we have become more connected to our technology than we have to each other. Do you remember the days when you used to go visit mom and daddy? Do you remember the days when you used to pull up at a friend's house and say, hey, I just want to talk? You don't do that anymore. You know why? Because you see what they're doing in their life. You see what they eat for supper every night on social media. Amen? And you say, well, I know everything about their life, so I don't need to talk to them. Listen, we still need to talk. Amen? Right. We still need interaction. We still need fellowship. That's what God uh, created us for. But with all that being said about social media, there are some things about social media that are great. And I'll say this, one of the things is it's giving Christians a platform to reach people that we could never reach before. That's right, that's right. Listen, this morning we're going to put this, this message out across the internet, and it may end up across the, 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 the ocean to another country. We've got a man that down in Honduras, one of our missionaries, he watches us a lot on, on Facebook and watches us on YouTube. So we, get, we may have our reach go from Ephesus Baptist Church or in Ephesus, Georgia, to a different country this morning. That's because of social media and because of, of, of the platform that we have. So it's been good. And God has took it upon some people to use it for a platform to tell others about Christ. And I don't know if some of you know this or not, but I see what some of you guys are posting and some of y'all preaching on Facebook. Amen? You may not know it, but some of y'all are preaching. Yes. I mean, I, I'll read what you write and I'll just have to shout and say, Amen! Praise the Lord because you're reaching you're preaching. You're telling others about Christ. And let me say this. I think that is a great thing. Continue to do that. Use social media for something that's good and to reach. And the, how I came up with this was I was reading a post that Brother Cody put just a few days ago. Brother Cody Hasty, a few weeks ago, he made this post. And I mean, I had a shouting fit inside my, the cab of my truck. Uh, and I was reading it going down the road. Amen, Lord forgive me. <laughs> 
That's another detriment of social media, amen. How many of y'all know you're reading this? And if y'all ever see me swerve out of the way in front because I was on something reading. But I had a shout fit because what he said was so true. And uh, God began, he, he made a statement in, in whatever, and I can't remember everything that he said in that statement. But I, he made this statement in there and put it in God's hands. And the first thing that went in, came into my mind was this scripture I just read you about Jesus hanging on the cross. When he made this statement, he says, Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. Yes. And what Jesus essentially done was he put his life, he put his spirit in God's hands. Amen. Can I give you the Blackjack Mountain version of what Jesus said on the cross? Y'all, I mean, I, I need all the translations I can get sometimes. The Blackjack Mountain version was this. He said, Daddy, I'm coming home. Amen. Daddy, I'm putting my spirit in your hand. That's what he said. And the Lord began to speak to me on this verse and began to speak uh, about what I want to show you today. And I know Easter is supposed to be a day where you preach about the, the, the empty tomb and you preach about Jesus getting up out of the tomb and conquering death and conquering hell and conquering the grave. And praise God he did all that. Yes. But I'm going to preach about the cross this morning. Yes. I want to tell you why I'm going to preach about the cross this morning because the cross made a difference for me. Yes. Amen. I, I, want to, I want you to know before the cross, before Jesus died on that cross, this is where I was at with God. I was found guilty before God of being a sinner. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, For all have uh, sinned and fell short of the glory of God. The Bible says we're all sinners before God this morning. Amen. And I was found uh, to be a sinner. And I was found guilty. I had no plea. I had no excuse. Before Jesus died on that cross, I was a sinner. My sin incurred a debt. When you, when you work for something, you know, you, you, you incur... You, you get a wage or you incur a debt. My sin incurred a debt, and it was a debt that I could not pay. And the debt that it cost, the cost of my debt was death. The Bible says, uh, for the wages of sin is death. So I could not pay that. The only way I could pay that death was dying a death and living a life in hell. Or living eternity in hell, excuse me. But God made a way for, for his people and he gave them the law, the law of Moses. The only thing about that law was I couldn't keep it. Amen. Right. I couldn't do it. I could not uphold it. The Bible says if you offend the law in one point, you've offended it in all points. So if you broke it in one way, that means if you tell a little white lie, you're just as guilty as you go murder somebody. Listen, that's what the Bible says. I know that ain't really don't, doesn't really sound fair, but that's just the truth this morning. Can I tell you what we need in this day and time? We need the truth, amen? Right. And the truth is if you offend the law, then you're guilty of the law. And you have a debt of sin. And it's a debt that you could not pay. Before Jesus died on the cross, that's where I stood. In my sin, the Bible says I was an enemy of God. Listen, I thought God loved everybody. God does love everybody. That's why he sent Jesus. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But it also says this. It says this, you adulterers and adulteresses. In James chapter 4, verse 4, that means you sinner and sinneresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is intimate with God and whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. That's what the Bible says. And listen, when we were lost in our sin, we were friends with the world. Right. And the Bible says because we were friends in the world, we were enemies of God. That's right. Let me tell you what Jesus said in that Bible that's so good. Jesus said, you, you, you've heard this before, hate thy enemy and love thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. But he said, love thy enemy. <laughs> hey, listen, God loved his enemy this morning. Amen. That's he right. loves you this morning if you're a sinner. But before the cross, that's where I stood. And I was like a sheep. With no hope. I was like a lost sheep with no hope. Ephesians chapter number 2 says this. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 2 says this. We're in time past according, you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we have all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and the, of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. The Bible says that's where I was. I was a children of disobedience. I was like a sheep that was lost and had no shepherd. That's where I was at before the cross. 
I want to tell you where I'm at because of the cross this morning. I want to tell you where I'm at this morning after Jesus died on that cross and after I put my faith in his precious shed blood this morning. The Bible says this in Romans chapter number 5. It says this. It says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Listen, the Bible says when Jesus died on that cross that all you have to do is believe by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Just believing in the finished work on the cross at Calvary. And listen, I want you to say, I want you to know this this morning. When he was hanging on that cross and he said, it is finished, that means it was finished. Right. The plan of salvation was done right. and all you got to right. do is believe in the work that he has done. The Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, I have peace with God. Uh, and he paid in full my debt. I told you we had a debt that I could not pay. But Jesus paid the debt for me. I, did, I couldn't pay that debt, but Jesus paid the debt for me. It says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What are you saying there? It's when Jesus Christ was hanging on that cross, all the sin you ever had in your life that was past, all the sin that you have right now, and all the sin that you will ever have in the future was placed upon his shoulders, and he bore the weight of your sin. He made him to be sin. Who knew no sin that we might, through him, might be have the righteousness of God. After Jesus Christ died on that cross, and I put my faith in it, then I got his righteousness because of my faith. The Bible says when he hung on that cross, he says this, to tell us die, that means paid in full. He stamped my debt, paid in full that day when I put my faith in him. Romans chapter 8 says this, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now when I stand before God, God cannot condemn me. He just looks at me and says there's no condemnation to him because I don't see him anymore. I see his son. I see the blood of his son, yes. of my son this morning. And praise God this morning, because of that, I've been made free. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, he says this. Verse number 32, it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says this in verse 38, or verse 36, um, If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free. Indeed. This morning, I want you to know something. I'm free this morning. Amen. Yeah, I'm free from my sin. I'm free from my past. Uh, I, I'm free from all the things that I used to do. And listen, I had, a, I, I had a bad past. But I'm free from it this morning because through Jesus and through his righteousness, I've been made right with God. The Bible says I'm not an enemy to God anymore. But it says this. I'm, I'm really, I'm not an enemy, but I'm more like a son. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 8. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba. Well, that means Jesus Christ adopted me. I don't know if y'all know the rules about adoption, but when you adopt a child, you can't ever disown them. Amen. You can't never get rid of them. If you adopt them, they're yours. You took possession of them, and you can't get rid of them if you want to. So he can't get rid of me. There may be some times he might want to, Brother Edward. <coughs> There may be some days he can look down on me and say, Lord, have mercy, that kid needs some help. But he can't get rid of me because I'm his and he's mine this morning. Praise God. That's where I'm at because of the cross. I got peace with God for it. Not only that, but I have a home in heaven. The Bible says, therefore, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I got a home in heaven. This is not all I'm living for. This is not my home. This is not where I'm planning to stay for all of eternity. I'm going to live here as long as God let me live here. But as soon as I take my last breath here, I'm going to open my eyes and take yes, my first one in heaven. All that happened because of the cross. This is what the cross did for me. Uh, the cross made a difference for me. And as hideous and as cruel and as horrible and as heavy as it was, that cross, oh man, that cross done something that I couldn't do. It paid the price and the penalty of my sin. Right. Listen, if you're here this morning, if you ever accept and put your faith in him, it paid for your sin too. On that old rugged cross, Jesus made seven statements. All of them powerful, all of them meaningful. I do not have the time to tell you what all he said. You can go back and look that up in your Bible. But he made seven statements. But I'm going to focus on this one this morning. Father, into thy hands I commend thy spirit. Why is this unique? What is unique about this, this uh, statement that he made? 
Do you know all the Gospels record Jesus is dying? But every one of them except Luke, all three Gospels except Luke, Matthew, Mark, and John, record this. They say that he gave up the ghost. Or he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Do you notice none of them say that he just died? Said he gave up the ghost. But Luke says that he made a statement. It says, Father, into my hands I commend thy spirit. So why is Luke tell us a different story? It's not different. It's just a, a different view on it. If you look in the Bible in Colossians, the Bible says that Luke was a doctor. He was a physician. So while these other guys were fishermen and all this kind of stuff, they didn't really care about what happened when he died. Luke was interested in how he died. Right. So he looked it up. And he, he done some research and into that, but he said he 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 uh, said I commend my spirit. And what Paul, Luke is showing us here in this story is what I want to show you really quick is that Jesus really on that cross showed us in his last statements how to die well. I want to die well. So I want to live well. I want to be able to die well. Jesus died with confidence. Let me say this: Jesus was not killed. I'm going to make a statement this morning. Amen. Jesus was not killed. There's a lot of debate that's went on about this for some time, that the Jews killed Jesus or the Romans killed Jesus or we killed Jesus. Nobody killed Jesus. Jesus chose to die. Jesus said, Father, into, my, into thy hands I commend my spirit, and he chose to give up the ghost. That's why none of those Bible authors ever said that he died. They said he gave up the ghost. No man took his life from him. Listen, he says this in the book of John. He says, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it up again. He said, no man taketh my life from me. No man took his life from him, but he showed us how to die. And that I mean this. He, he, there's one or two ways you're going to die. Prepared or unprepared. There may be some of you in here today that's not prepared to die. When somebody starts talking about dying, you get all nervous and upset. That's because you're not prepared to die. When people start talking about death around Christian folks that know they're going to see Jesus, they just sit down and have a conversation right. about it. Amen. Right. It's not morbid. It's just that, hey, that's not a big deal to us because we know where we're going. Yeah. But if you're nervous about dying, that means you're not prepared to die. Right. Well, I want you to know Jesus was prepared this morning. I want to look really quick. i got about six, seven points right here. You're going to have to bear with me. But he says this, number one, he was connected to the Father. To be prepared, he was connected to the Father. If you're going to die, you need to be prepared to be connected to the Father. Listen to this. This, uh, I, I, this is not my words. I, I got this from a quote from another preacher, and it was so good, I just had to write it down. James Merrill said this. You are not ready to, to live until you're ready to die. You're not ready to die until you're ready to meet God. You're not ready to meet God until you know God as your father. You don't know him as your father until you become his child. Yes. You don't become his child until you're born again into his family. Yeah. And you're not born again into his family until you receive his son. Yeah. If you want to call God father when you die, you must call Jesus your savior when you live. Yeah. And I got one question for you this morning. Do you know him? Yeah. Are you ready to die? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you prepared to meet the Father because you've called Jesus Savior here on earth? And I mean, when I say, when I mean call him Savior, I mean, have you asked him to be the Savior of your life and to cleanse your heart and to wash you from your sins? It's not just uh, showing up to church. Really. We don't just get saved by showing up to church. There's got to be a, a repentance of our sin, a turning from our wickedness, and asking Jesus to change our heart. You got to be, and to do that, and when you do that, you become connected to the Father. Yes. He adopts us. Right. And we're connected to Him. Are you connected this morning? Number two, you got to be committed to the Father's hands. When He says this, I commend my spirit into thy hands, what He's saying is, He's actually, it is, you look it up, commend or commit is another translation. It's a banking term. <coughs> it it kind of means deposit. It means I'm going to deposit something. Every, all of us know how the banks work, right? When we go make a deposit, we put it in the bank, and we say this. All right, bank, I'm going to take my paycheck, and I know if I leave my wallet, I'm going to spend on something I don't need. I'm going to buy some shoes, ladies, or I'm going to buy some, some clothes, or I'm going to buy some flowers. I'm going to buy something I don't need. 
Men, if you say, if I keep this, I'm going to go buy a gun, I'm going to go buy a cow, I'm going to go buy something that I don't really need. So I'm going to take my money and I'm going to deposit it into the bank. And, I'm gonna, and that what we're saying is, bank, I trust that you're going to keep my money safe. Right. So when he said, I commend my spirit in thy hands, what he's saying is, Father, I trust my spirit to you. Amen. And I know you're going to keep it safe. All right. We committed it to the Father's hands. Do you know this? Nobody makes you deposit anything into the bank, do they? Right. It's a voluntary act. And Jesus voluntarily deposited his spirit into the Father's hands. He committed it into the Father's hands. And when he said that from the cross, if they were those Jews that would have been there, it doesn't mean much to you and me, but they would have known. They said, hey, I've heard that before. That's actually prophecy. Because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 31, verse number 5, David wrote, he says, I will entrust or I will commit my spirit into thy hands. So they heard that before, but they heard something before that. They said they heard Father. Jesus called him Father. Let me say this. Our time, David goes on right after that, that our time, or my time, is in thy hands, O Lord. How many of y'all know this? Our life's not really ours anyway. Miss Brenda, hope you live to be 112. But listen, <laughs> you don't know. Your life's in his hands. And when God says, all right, I'm ready for Brenda to come home, Brenda's going home. That don't mean if it's tomorrow. That don't mean that may be the end of the day. I hope not. It may be when you're 112. Amen. But his, your life's in his hands. Right. Truth is, all of our lives are in his hands this morning. Right. Our time is not on our clock. You may make, um, make plans for your life. And it's good to make plans. I'm not against making plans. But let me say this. Sometimes God knows more about your life than you know about your life. Right. Because your time is in his hands. We don't know how much time we have. So we've got to be prepared. We've got to be committed. Have you committed your life into the Father's hands? Listen, this is important this morning. This is life or death. Have you ever committed your heart to Jesus this morning? What does that mean? That means have you ever asked him to come and save you? Well, if you've asked him for that, let me say this. Have you ever committed your life to live for? This ain't just about living and dying. It's not just about dying. It's about living. Some of y'all need to commit your life to him to live for him now. Because God's got something that he wants to use you for. There's a lot of talent in these pews this morning. There's a lot of things that God can use you with. If you'll just say, Lord, I'm going to commit my life into your hands. And however you want to use it, just use it. Boy, I tell you, when you do that right there, God will do things you have never seen. That's right. Brother Mark, I'm going to use you. I use you all the time, but I love this little example. That was a few years ago when we just started out and God called me to preach. And I was preaching on Wednesday nights and on 6 o'clock and then I'd run getting that church van. I'd go run that church van and pick up kids and I'd come back and then I'd teach kids on, on uh, at 7 o'clock. And I'll tell you what, I was running pretty thin. And I think it was about 4 or 5 years ago on Palm Sunday I preached the message, Give your donkey to the Lord. Old Brother Mark came up to me about a week later and he said, Brother, i got to give my donkey to the Lord. I said, what do you mean? He said, the Lord told me to drive that van. I said, praise God. I've been praying for somebody to do that for a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to take that van. I'm going to drive it. What he really done was said, Lord, I commit my life to you. Right. And whatever you want to do with it, it's yours. He took that little old van and he started driving it. About two or three months later, he come back and said, I need another van. I said, praise the Lord. We found a van, got another van. And he fills it up every Wednesday night. Right. Been doing that for four or five years. And there's a lot of folks that's learned about Jesus. A lot of young people that some seeds been planted in their heart. There's been right. some salvations took place because yes. a man said, Lord, I commit my hey, life hey. into thy hands. And I wonder if there's somebody here this morning needs to do the same right. thing. Lord, into, my, into thy hands I commit my life. Number three, being confident in the Father's hope. Not only that, we need to be confident in the Father's hope. He entrusted his spirit to his father. Notice this. Notice this. He entrusted the most important part of him to his father. He said, I give you my spirit. I want you to know something this morning. A lot of us work on, a lot of folks work on, and take care of the least important part of yourself. 
What's the most important part? It's not this body. It's his spirit. Right. Jesus said, into thy, my, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You see, so many of us spend so much time working on these bodies. Try to get them in shape for the beach, amen? Try to get them in shape at the gym. We'll pump iron and we'll, we'll run those marathons and we'll run on that treadmill and you'll buy, uh, 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 or not even say this, somebody will make fun of me, amen? But I bought an exercise bike back in December because I knew I was going to need to work on this body and I rode that thing for about three weeks and I got tired of it and I said, I just want to be fat, amen? <laughs> found in the Bible where it says for bodily exercise profited little, amen? <laughs> but the Bible says this, but godliness is profitable into all things. Right. My Bible told me just be fat and godly and everything will be all right. That's what I'm working on, amen? But listen, what I'm telling you is we work on this thing. It don't matter how much work you do on it, it's going to break down on you. Right. One of these days it's going to the grave. It don't matter how much you work on it, how much you take care of it, how much you diet it, how much you pump iron, how much you, you whatever. It's going to break down on you. But we spend so little time trying to take care of the spirit. The part is going to live forever. This body's not living forever. It's going right. into the ground and it'll go back to dust until God turns it back into a perfect body if you know it. But listen, we'll spend all this time working on this body. No time working on the spirit. The Spirit's going to last forever. It's going to live in eternity one or two places, either heaven or hell. We need to spend time working on the Spirit. But we can be confident when we commend our spirit that the Father's going to keep it. Invest in your spirit this morning. We know that. We have hope. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 6, verse 18 and 19, it says this. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Who having fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Amen. Which entereth into the fail. We've got a hope with Jesus. We can be confident in the Father's hope this morning. Because we know that when we die, when we commend our spirit where our spirit is going. Some people, let me ask you this question. Though. Why do we fear de death? Why do we fear it? So many people do. So many people, and one of the reasons they're not prepared for it, but secondly, it's just, there's just so much unknown about it. There ain't been very many people, and I don't know of anybody that I've known of in my life that's died and come back and told you what it was all about. So what happens when you die? Well, the Bible says you go to be with the Lord. Well, what's the process like? I have no idea. I don't know. Don't know what happens when you blink your eye. I got a good, I got a good uh, mind, or I, I believe I know what happens. I believe you blink your eyes here dead and you open them in heaven alive. That's what I think happens. I don't know the process. I can't tell you. I'm not an expert on that. But so many people are worried about what happens because we just don't know what the process is. But we know where the end result is. Right. This is the end result this morning. Revelation chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes there shall be no more death and no sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's what it's going to be like there. We can, hope, we, we can be have confidence in that hope, but we've got to be prepared. I want to say this this morning. Jesus gives a good template to die by, amen? Right. I want to die like Jesus. Nobody in, the, in their life had ever died on the cross. And was able to raise up and to shout out, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. All of them usually died of, a, of asphyxiation or suffocation. They just couldn't say anything. Jesus rose up and said, I give my life away for all those of the sinners that will come to know me. He gave us a good template to die by. Let me say this real quick and I'll be done. I promise I'm trying to wrap this up. He also gave us a good template to live by. Right. 
Listen, it ain't just about dying. It's a good way to die, but you better be prepared when you when you die. Yeah. But listen, he, he shows us how to live. Yes, he is. And how we live is just as I was talking about a while ago. Give us an instruction to commit our lives into his hands. You see, sometimes life gets overwhelmed. How many of y'all would agree with me right there? Sometimes life's overwhelming. Actually, life is overwhelming and overwhelming amount of the time. Can y'all didn't y'all didn't know a redneck to say something like that, did you? <laughs> life is overwhelming and overwhelming amount of the time. That means most of the time life is more than we can handle. Life gets on top of us and piled up on us. Bills pile up that we can't pay. Jobs become a burden. People frustrate us. Temptations attack us. Worry consumes us and fear cripples us. And loneliness is our only companion sometimes. And life just gets more than we can handle. But I come to tell you today, you can take it all and do just as Jesus did and say, God, I entrust you with my life. I give my life and all my problems up to you. So I want to ask you this this morning. Why would I entrust my life into God's hands. Jesus said, I give my spirit to him, but why should you say, I'm going to give my life to this, in his hands? Let me say this, because his hands are never full. Right. Listen, his hands ain't never full this morning. Where's Sammy at? Come here, Sammy. Where's Sammy? Is he got left there? Y'all have been looking at these boxes all day long. I know y'all have. Y'all thought I done brought you Easter candy and Easter chocolate. I didn't bring you no chocolate this morning. I, this is just a little demonstration I want you to say. All right, this is... This is Sammy. He's going to be my little helper right here. Sammy represents us, okay? He represents us and our walk in our life. Sometimes as he's walking, as Sammy's walking in life, he sees things like this that comes about, and they become overwhelming. Here's one. This is a big one. Hold that out right there, Sammy. How many of y'all know sometimes work becomes overwhelming? Right. I mean, your work can come overwhelming. Uh, people ask me a lot of times, just sit there and hold that for a minute there. Look real pretty, okay? <laughs> people ask me a lot of times, and they say, Preacher, what do you do? I say, well, I pastor a church. And they say, well, that's awesome. That, you, you must stay busy doing that. And I say, well, yeah, but I also got a chicken farm. They say, how many chicken houses you got? I say, eight. They say, how many chickens is that? I said, about 150,000. They say, my goodness. I say, well, then I got cows, and I, I take care of some cows, and then I just go down the list about the ten things that I do do. You know what they say? Well, preacher, you got your hands full. Hey. Absolutely. I know about getting your hands full. Yeah. Work will get your hands full sometimes. Right. You may not have my same situation, but you, work will get your hands full. But not only do you have work, but sometimes you have this that comes up. Woo! Just hold it right there. <laughs> family. How many of y'all know work and family sometimes come into big conflict? Right. And they can get overwhelmed. You work, you have to work so much to take care of your family, but because you work so much, you can't, you can't take care of your family because you're never there. And you're, you're going and trying to do those things. So that becomes a big burden, right? right. We, we, look, he's already getting overwhelmed. He's just got two things. Just work and family. How I many of y'all know sometimes that's all it takes is work and family? But there's other things. Here's a big one right here. How about finances? Woo, how many of y'all know the, one of the things, the quickest ways for you to get upset and your life get out of control is get your finances out of control. When there's more bill than there's paycheck, that thing gets overwhelming fast. There's a lot of things that begins to happen, but it just continues to pile up. Listen, finances don't care about work, and work don't care about family, and family don't care about finances. How many of y'all know your teenage daughters or, or sons don't care about how much work or how much finances you have? Amen? Right. They think you've got unlimited amount of finances. Amen? And they'll just say, Daddy, I need this, or Mama, I need that. No matter that you're just trying to pull your hair out, trying to make a dime to just to get by, they think you've got to have everything. Listen, that just, that's just part of it. That adds to the stress of life. It just, it's all building up. Is that getting heavy yet? He says it's not getting heavy yet. That's good. 
Then comes along this. Trial. Uh oh. A little steady, unsteady right there. Trials. What does that mean? It means anything that troubles you in your life. How many of y'all know that trouble comes along often? A man that's born a woman is full of iniquity and have troubles all of his life. What the Bible right says. Troubles, trials will come. You say, well, I ain't having no problems right now. Well, you wait till next week. Yeah. You may have some next week. Yeah. Trials come and trials go. But trials just stack up on top of all the other stuff. You're right. And it becomes overwhelming. We was like, man, I can't handle this no more. I'm getting to the point I can't break. I'm, I'm about to break. Yet there's still about to be some more stuff here. Uh-oh. Get a little. Uh-oh. Temptations. How many of y'all know temptations come? Woo, listen. You may not have the same temptation that I got, but we all got them, amen? You're right. Lord, the Bible says the Lord knows how to deliver us out of those temptations. Amen. But you better believe the devil knows what tempts you. And he's going to bring it before your face over and over and over. And you're trying to deal with work. You're trying to make a, 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 you're trying to make a, 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 a living for your family. Your finances is just not getting out. And your family's hollering, I want to go on vacation. You say, well, I can't go on vacation because i got to work. And you say, well, oh, what about coming to this or coming to that? And you say, well, i got to work. And then the trials hit you and there's, your car breaks down or you blow out a tire or something goes on in your life and you already didn't have enough finances, but then a trial hits you. Right. And then a temptation comes along. I mean, there's something that you've been really wanting. I mean, I'm talking there's something mm -hmm. that you've been looking for, you've been looking at on Facebook Marketplace. And I mean, you found that thing and it is a deal. And you can't let a deal go by, right? right. If it's a deal, you got to buy it. That temptation comes by. Your finances is already screaming for life. Right. Your family already ain't got enough. That temptation comes by. Buy me. Buy me. Buy me. Uh-oh. Is he getting overloaded? He's acting a lot like us, ain't he? That's what happens when you go by that temptation right there and your finances is saying, I got to have some money. You're like, well, I can't handle all this. But we're not done yet. Oh, here comes another one. Relationships. Mm. Relationships. And that, that just covers every relationship you might have. Something about your marriage, your boyfriend or girlfriend, the way you get along with your mama and your daddy, and your siblings, or your oh, what relationships. Work co workers, working relationships. Hey, turn around and show them in the back. <laughs> Woo. Oh, say he did it. <laughs> so he's got all these things. Life has gotten overwhelming. Would y'all say he's got his hands full? Amen. Life will fill your hands up. Amen. Look, I just put six boxes up here. How many of y'all know they so many more things? Amen. I mean, life will get on top of you, and then next thing you know, you have a bump in the road. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh! <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> All right, won't you stand right here? Stand back up here. I'm going to put them back up. We drop them. I mean, the things happen, and we just drop things. Life overwhelms us, and we can't handle it. We just can't handle it anymore. And this is just six things. Not all these other things, the other things that you deal with that I might not even talk about, but that's what you do. Your hands are full. Let me tell you, stand real still. It's what God wants you to do. Come here, Dustin. God says, I'll help you all that if you'll just ask me. I'll help you with finances. You say, how can you help me with finances, God? He says, I can stretch a dollar bill further than anybody else can. Yeah, right. You obey my word and put 10% in the offering plate. And tithe and give like the Bible says. He says you'll never run out. Now he didn't say you'd have all that you needed. He didn't say you'd have all of abundance of stuff. But he said you would never run out. He can help, God says I can help you with work. I can give you a good job. I can give you a job where you can be off every Sunday and you can go to church. I can give you a job where you get along with everybody in the say. I can give you a job that you love what you're doing. And what's the old saying? If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Listen, my hands are full on the farm, but you know what? I ain't working. 
what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. God's let me do. Give me a job that I love. He'll take him trial. And he says this, the Bible says there's no trial and there's no temptation that comes before you that I ain't made a way that you can get out of it if you're just entrusted in me. So what do you want you to do? Dusty, because he's a whole lot bigger than Sammy, he's a, he, hold on right here. He's like, he's going to be our God in this picture, okay? He says, I want you to take this. I want you to do this. He says, I want you to take your finances and your family and give me that. Give it to God's hands. And he says, I want you to take this work. And I want you to put work in my hands. Then I want you to take these, these relationships that you're struggling with. And here, give me the relationships. I'll work them out. I'll work out all them relationships that you're having problems with. All them marriage problems that you're having. Just take them to me. I'll work them out. All them issues of find the, trying to find the right spouse, young people. If you'll trust God and ask God, he'll send you the right one. Yes, amen. You won't mess up and you won't strike out. He'll give you the one that you need, the one that your soul was built for. You say, how do you know that? She's sitting right back there since third grade. That's mine. She was meant for me. God done that. He says this, give me them temptations. There's no temptation that comes before man. It's not common of God. Listen, Jesus Christ felt every temptation that you feel. How many of y'all know sometimes you just want to kill folks? I'm, I, I'm just being honest here this morning. I ain't trying to be all churchy. I ain't trying to be all churchy. There's some folks that you come in contact with, you got to wring their neck. I mean, seriously. Come on, bro. What do you think Jesus felt about them men nailing him to that cross? Yeah. Them people pulling his beards out by the handful, spitting in his face, mm. calling him a blasphemy. You don't think he wanted that? But he says this, he said, I'm going to entrust that into you, God, because I know you'll take care of it. I'm dying for them. I hope you save them. But if you don't, you'll take care of them. And then he'll say this, give me them trials. I can handle them trials. Y'all, do y'all see the, the example here? What was overloading Sammy and he could barely hold up? God ain't got no problem. Because God's hands are never full. God's hands are never full. Put it in his hands. Y'all can go sit down. Thank you for helping me this morning. The Bible says in Isaiah, well, I'll just tell you, I feel the Lord right here. You're going to have to bear with me for just a minute. The Bible says in Isaiah, somebody, God's talking to somebody's heart right now. God's dealing with you. You know what I'm telling you is the truth. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12, How do you know God's hands never full? Because the Bible says that God who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. Right. Y'all know how much water's on this earth? It's a whole lot. I mean, if you ever get out in the middle of it, you can't see land. You're thinking you, it's all water. It says he took his hand, done like that, and measured out the water in the earth That's right. and poured it into the world. God's hand's pretty big, y'all. Amen. He also says this, and meted out the heaven... With the span. Pull that up, Mr. Cole. The heaven. That's the universe. There's three different types of heaven. There's a heaven that the birds fly in, the heaven that is the universe type heaven, and the heaven that's the third heaven that you and I are going to one day if we know Jesus. But the span of our Milky Way right there, do you know how much it, how, how big it is? I looked this up this morning, and it says it's 100,000 light years across. What's a light year? Light year is how long it takes a beam of light to travel. To get, you know, if you flip on your lights, it's instant. But it takes a beam of light 100,000 years to travel across that, that, that universe. Nicole, I was telling her about it. She said, that don't make no sense to me. I don't see things like that. I said, well, how are, you supposed, how are they supposed to? To measure it. It's so big you can't measure it. She said, I got a picture. Pull it up. Y'all see that spot right there? That is Jupiter. How many of y'all teenagers knew that or young people knew that? That's Jupiter. And right there beside that big old spot in Jupiter, that is North America. That's the whole continent of Alaska, of Canada, United States, and Mexico. That's how big it is compared to Jupiter. 
And that's just one planet in the whole solar system. But the Bible says that God took his hand and he laid it out like that. That's right. And he measured out the universe. Listen, the universe ain't near as big as God's hands. Right. 100,000 light years it takes by. God's hands are never full. That's right. God can handle your problem. You say, well, I just don't know if God can handle it. I promise you, friend, he can handle your problem this morning. <coughs> His hands are never full. Number two, his hands are always open. He says, come unto me, all you that are burdened or heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He says, come unto me, all you that labor or heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me for, my, for, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His hands are always open. He's like Waffle House. He's never closed. You ever been by a Waffle House that wasn't open? I hadn't unless it was COVID. But listen, he's always open. He's always ready. Casting your care upon me, for I care for you. You put your life in his hand. He's always open. Number three, and I'm done. From his hands, you can never fall. Listen, from his hands, you can never fall. You know why Jesus committed his spirit into the Lord's hand? Because he said, I'll never fall out of it. His hands are secure. And they'll hold me forever. You can't ever fall out of his hands. John, and I'm done. Let me read this right quick. And I'm done. John chapter number 10, verse 28 and 29 says this. He's talking about that good shepherd. He says, I, the good shepherd, I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Listen, you can't fall out of his hand. Satan can't pry you out of his hand. Once you're in his hand, you're secure. If you'll just commit your life unto his hand. His hands are never full. They're always open. And you can't never fall out of them. I wonder if you just need to commit your life to his hands this morning. There may be somebody here that's dealing with salvation. You've never given your heart to Jesus. You've lived a good life. Good men go to hell every day. Right. What, takes, what it takes to be saved is trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and letting him apply it to your heart, repenting of your sins and turning from your <coughs> wicked ways and asking God to make you new again. The Bible says in this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. We preached on that last week. Would you just commit your heart to him this morning? Maybe some here that's overwhelmed with life, just like I showed that little illustration. Maybe you just need to commit something to part of your life to the Lord this morning. He's spoken to you. Your heart got to thumping real hard when I was doing that illustration. That means you got more than your hands can hold. But God says, if you'll bring it to me, I'll help you carry it. I'll help you get through it. I'll help you just come out of it better than you was before you ever went in it. If you'll just entrust your life into my hands. As some of y'all is dealing with God wanting you to do something. God's calling you to a place of service and you've just been fighting it. Your life's been a wreck ever since you've been fighting it. Just throw your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Watch it all just smooth out. God's able to do that this morning. Maybe you're here and your life is perfect. None of the stuff I talk about it enters into your life and your life is perfect. You better be the first one up here thanking God for a good life that's perfect and doesn't have any problems. And I know this, ain't none of us perfect. And we all got issues. But listen, maybe everything's going pretty good. Just worship Him. That's something you ought to shout the top off this house about. Because God has been that good to you. Right. And today's the day that He got it. Whatever the Lord's put upon your heart, I want you to obey Him. We're going to sing a song this morning. Come on, Brother Clive, Brother Tony. I want you to stand to your feet this morning. I want you to think real hard about what the Lord spoke to your heart. I know it's crowded. I know there's a lot of people here. I know there's chairs down the aisle. Don't let that get in your way. If you need to do business with the Lord, the altar's open. If you need to be saved, come take me by the hand and say, Preacher, I need to be saved. Say it so I can, so it's clear, and I will show you what the Bible says about salvation. You just need to worship and you just want to pray. Maybe you've got a burden you want to lay to the Lord. It's up here this morning. Help's available.
If you'll just ask him as we pray. Lord, I love you. Thank you for a good day. Thank you for preaching this morning. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. And Lord, I just pray that it helps somebody. It be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 165. 165. Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. Look unto rain.
God has moved it on. Amen. Any other words?